So over the last few weeks, there have been incredible advancements in artificial intelligence and in quantum computing. We saw the drama with Sam Altman getting fired from OpenAI, the company that created ChatGPT. And then we saw his subsequent return and firing of the board in a very succession-like style. Because I love it in here. I fucking love it! But the rumors and the subsequent articles that followed seem to paint a very troubling portrait about why exactly this coup was led against him. Now there was this project called QSTAR, which Altman did confirm was a leaked document, so we have a, a tiny sliver of truth. We don't have a full comment from OpenAI as of yet, but this project that they were working on seemed to, now this is all alleged that I'm saying right now, this is what the internet sleuths are saying, seem to achieve some sort of artificial general intelligence. And that means that the computer can solve mathematical equations far greater than any human mathematician ever could. It's the rise of actual artificial intelligence. Okay, what does this all mean? Well, if we have major advancements and possible achieving of artificial general intelligence and also quantum computing reaching a level of actual usability, encryption might be broken. The investigation is ongoing, and it's a reminder that cyber threats are an urgent and growing danger. I mean, I used to have to get a search warrant to look inside your house, or I can just log on to your Facebook and you've got pictures of all inside your house and what's going on. We've launched a 100-day initiative to improve cybersecurity uh, across the electric sector. They're worried about the popular apps' ties to the Chinese government. Imagine a world where all of the locks on all the homes, banks, and military installations vanished overnight. That is a world without encryption. Now, in order to stand how powerful quantum computing is in terms of encryption, we need to talk a little bit about classic encryption, what we're using today. I've thrown up a little explainer piece really quick that breaks down encryption. The goal of encryption is to garble data in such a way that no one who has the data can read it unless they're the intended recipient. And the encryption of pretty much all private information sent over the internet relies immensely on one numerical phenomenon. As far as we can tell, it's really, really hard to take a really big number and find its factors using a normal, non-quantum computer. Unlike multiplication, which is very fast, just multiply the digits together and add them up, finding the prime numbers that multiply together to give you an arbitrary, big, non-prime number appears to be slow. At least, the best approach we currently have that runs on a normal computer, even a very powerful one, is very slow. Like, to find the factors of this number, it took 2,000 years of computer processor time. Now, it's not yet proven that we won't eventually find a fast way to break encryption just with normal computers, but it's certain that anybody with a large working quantum computer today would pose an immediate privacy and security threat to the whole internet. Now, this year, the secure messaging app Signal released a white paper about a post-quantum cryptography protocol that they are using in Signal. So Signal has pushed a quantum resistant upgrade to their encryption by using what they call the Crystal's Kyber post-quantum mechanism. I'm smiling because that sounds so damn complex, um, but I'm stoked about it. Basically Signal now requires hackers to attack the existing layer of encryption they have and this post-quantum layer of encryption. So we have double the amount of encryption for this messaging app that funny enough, not as many people use, which is just really fascinating to me. It's the most secure thing, it works great, it's fine, and yet everybody's still using the unsecure SMS or iMessage. Now I know iMessage is end-to-end -end encrypted, but you know, if you had access to a Ferrari or a, an old Mercedes, I know they're similar, but I, I would rather drive the Ferrari. Signal's proactive move sets a new standard in secure communication. Now, I'm always stoked to hear news about a new level of encryption being used on a secure messaging app, but then I started to think, okay, is my bank using something this sophisticated? Turns out, no. 
there are a few uh, publications and white papers out there saying that the financial sector is lacking in post-quantum preparedness, which is absolutely terrifying because a lot of hackers are doing this thing called store now, decrypt later. And what they're doing is gathering all the critical info from medical documents, banking records, emails, text messages, everything. And they have it on a big storage device somewhere and will just wait for the day that a quantum computer comes online and can help them decrypt it. So the fact that this isn't being done industry-wide um, is quite terrifying. Quite frankly, you could read all my text messages, but I don't want you to take all the money out of my bank account. So with this project, I always want there to be a takeaway at the end of each video on what you can do to increase your digital safety. So I think it's very clear that you should use Signal for all your communications. I understand that it's tough to do all of your communications there because you need to get the other person on board. But for the most secure things you're doing, try to use Signal. Um, companies like ProtonMail offer great secure email services because Signal doesn't offer that yet. I would also practice encrypting everything you have, storing backups of everything you have on air grabbed hard drives. Use the everyday carry essentials that I referenced in the first video on securing access to all your information. And really the big thing is to spread the word about post-quantum cryptography. I know it's a big mouthful and people are busy and stuff, but the more this gets talked about, the more it gets adopted and the more we're safe. And as always, what you could do to enhance your digital safety is follow everything we're doing at the Digital Resilience Project. Subscribe to the channel and like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.